The milagros mean different things to different people. I look at them as a, a reminder that diabetes is a devastating disease. The milagro uh, uh, is a symbol of miracles, and I do think that um, that's exactly what happened, not just in terms of miracles for better outcomes, but miracles in the way that we as a community came together and collaborated and respected each other. Where TDI is, uh, is different than our other facilities is it has a research component. And, and that's been a partnership with the Health Science Center uh, for all these years. Metformin was the first new drug introduced into the United States in 1995, and I led the development uh, of this uh, drug. We were changing our paradigm, and we even changed our name. Our real name is the Bear County Hospital District, but we took a DBA, University Health System, for precisely that reason. We wanted to emphasize health. And now that we had done that, and now we use that name each and every day, then it, 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 we started to change ourselves right. as to how we look at how we deliver care. Well, I was pastor at San Alfonso two blocks away at the time, and, and uh, literally people were coming to me asking, what are we going to do? Because the idea was that's where everybody went for health care. If they had a cold or a heart attack or whatever, they came to Lutheran generally. And that was the beginning of the community dialogue in Cops Metro at the time to uh, try to figure out what to do. And, and looking at it now 20 years later, I, I see how it was an evolving process, even for me, because we had ideas first, get another hospital opened here. And um, they came with information. They did their homework. They uh, looked at, um, you know, the research involved with healthcare needs and, and had some really challenging questions for us. I was at the receiving end at that time of uh, the community's uh, research and things like that. And uh, I thought, I agree with Father Norm. I think it was a very collaborative approach. It's not always a fun conversation. Uh, it can be very challenging, very difficult. They're very direct with you. Um, and they want answers. I anticipated meeting with four, maybe six individuals, and it was at the Sacred Heart a Civic Center. And uh, as I went into the room, there were over 150 people in the room ready to interview me. And uh, it was a little overwhelming for me. I uh, was asked to sit in the front by myself uh, to receive questions uh, from the community but anyway, <laughs> but that's all public dialogue and, and how politics and government works. And I think it was a healthy thing. It's where I, I really think that the people were given a voice. Now we had to be a little coy and not say that we wanted it for a diabetes center or whatever, because the, not, not because of the community, because when we were bargaining with our bankers, the bankers who, who wanted to get reimbursement for the for the loans that that uh, Lutheran had defaulted on, uh, our outside attorney said, whatever you do, don't come up with a purpose, because if you come up with a purpose, that's gonna give them leverage to get more money from you, because they're gonna say, well, that's a value. And and so we, we, had to, we had to try to assure the community we were gonna do something with it, but at the same time, keep quiet with the bankers so that we would be able to maximize our, our, our bargaining position. So I thought it was kind of an interesting. And I'm sitting here saying, oh, that's what was going on. <laughs> Wish I had that insight then, but. <laughs> this is really the beginning of our, our Salute the Arte program. I, I think what Jackie wanted to uh, capture was, you can see that you captured the political movement, the religion, the spiritual uh, feelings of people, but also the art, um, not just uh, the art of painting, but the art of song. We, we, can, we can identify anywhere along that continuum of care, uh, people who need our help because they have diabetes. People with diabetes don't feel pain, so they don't uh, really key in uh, on uh, the disease. Uh, yet the ravages of the disease are progressing in a non-painful way, and so, uh, what these milagros mean to me is that we need to work hard to prevent blindness. We need to work hard to prevent people from losing uh, their limbs. We need to work hard to prevent people from developing kidney failure and ending up on uh, dialysis. And of course, uh, the studies that we carry out here have implications not only for the people in San Antonio, but in the U.S. and worldwide.
And, and I think that this place has reestablished a sense of uh, some power over diabetes and that they can live a healthy life, again, through the treatment here, the education, the uh, studies that are done and all of that. And, and, and boy, that goes a long way in keeping folks healthy. Well, you know, when we started here, we had about 30,000 visits uh, on an annual basis and uh, we're well over 100,000 visits um, every year. Knowing now that this is a model diabetes center that even from other countries, people come to see how it's set up to uh, take ideas back, it's a fantastic thing and I think there's incredible pride in the neighborhood. The commitment that TDI brings is a commitment to health.